Welcome to the 10th edition of Fair Cement House Build. We're going to continue on the uh, retaining wall for a little while and then we're going to jump over to the roof. And we're going to start by building the pony wall that sits on top of our concrete flange. And there won't be time this episode, but next time we're going to be building scissor tresses and maybe a rafter or two. Uh, while this is still green, I'm going to try to tie it into that because uh, the, the whole point the whole point of the round thing is to support the wall. The whole point of the beam is to support the wall. So I'm gonna make sure I have a good, good uh, single pour into all that. All right, so it's time for a little bit of a reality check. The second batch, since it was in the mixer so long when I did the first one, it didn't stay super workable for as long. So, I'm just going to mix them when I'm done. Man, that should go better. You tired, baby? Yes. Well, you take a little nap in your teepee. Okay, on that second mix, I put in the fibers when it was still pretty dry. And I put them in quick, so I had a lot more clumping. I had no clumping on the first the first load. So here we are, pretty wet. I'm going to put them in fairly slow again. The other thing that I did was I put the glue in before I did the fibers. I don't know if that made a difference, so I'm just going to put the glue in after the fibers. And I'm going to go kind of wet like I did the first one because that was really nice to work with. I think having fibers in there helps you work with a wet mud. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was holding its shape really, really well. Ooh, this is a little bit wet. Okay. Hmm. Got quite a bit of back plastering to do here. I'm going to tackle some of the deep spots first. All right, well, I got to admit, uh, doing this solo is kind of hard. <laughs> um, but, you know, this isn't the best work I've ever done. But it's far from the worst. Uh, doesn't look like that much from any one direction, but, yeah. I really got to give it to my dad, though. He claimed that he did two bags a day by himself when he was... Uh, my age <laughs> and I only got one and a half bags done but the fibers are nice I I'm I don't know why we haven't been doing this the whole time I'm really surprised but oh let's look at some of my yeah I, I got distracted I forgot that I was working up here so I might make one of those slurries with the glue and finish that up tomorrow make it look nice I just don't have it in me to mix another half bag, and uh, so those are gonna, gonna, this is going to have to be a separate part. Oh well. Alright, so on the quest to get the perfect uh, uh, dispersion of fibers, so far we've put them in slowly, which works pretty well, and we dumped them in fast, which is uh, kind of a disaster. So this one, I'm going to mess them up and introduce them slowly. So I'm going to get some in my hand. Let's see. Hmm. That doesn't really mess them up. Well, that doesn't do is what I thought. <laughs> is that a disaster? Now I just have fibers all in my glass. Oh, and they're going in fast. Okay. I got sparkly gloves now. Uh, well, that didn't work very well. Yeah, so that's what I like. I like it to slide and flop and slide and flop. Okay. So I got some mud. Gonna start loading her up.
right, so my spray bottle has gotten pretty terrible. <laughs> I can't hardly get anything out of it, right? What I'm thinking is I'm just going to take some of this uh, acrylic bonding adhesive. I'm just going to pour it in there. I'm going to use my, my brush and just try to get it on some of these. I'm going to mix a little bit of mud with it. Get a little fine slurry. That's something. <laughs> you gotta wash your tools. You always gotta stay on top of washing your tools. So what I was thinking about this was I'm gonna double fist it. I'm gonna get got a couple balls of mud here. So from the back side and the front side, since I can reach it, I'm just going to try. I'm not doing particularly large handfuls because I don't want to have too much fall off. I'll go ahead and smooth it out to minimize how much of it falls down. You're always going to get some mud that falls off into the uh, the ground. You know, sometimes we'll put down a, a board or something to catch it so we can scoop it up while it's still wet and, and use it. Another technique I like doing is loading my trowel and working it in. I think you have much less uh, fall off when you do it like this. But I don't know if it does as good of a job getting rid of all the air pockets in the cement. Because air pockets in, in the cement is like the biggest flaw <laughs> of hand loading uh, like this. Because uh, when, when this wall dries out, I'll show you. I can spray the back side of this. And then after about five minutes, a little bit of water starts to show on the front side. And that's <laughs> kind of distressing. So that's why you have to have an actual waterproof barrier on this stuff. All right, it's always good to hose down your, uh, your work. It's actually on the data sheet. It says... Uh, for two or three days after you do your concrete work, hose it down two to three times a day. And so just keep everything, you know, curing slowly. And it'll be stronger. But let's talk. Uh, <laughs> so this is taking a lot more time than I thought it would. I thought I had built a simple shape that would, you know, go rather quickly. But with all this detail work, you know, forming concrete up on on the top of of these tiny little rails that I've made. Uh, it's actually taken a lot of time. And actually what happened to me yesterday was I only mixed um, a half a bag of cement. And and so I got that far. <laughs> you know, I did I did that much in and, and that, that cross member there. And then my mud has started to set up on me. It got pretty hard. And so I, I reworked it with some water, but I didn't trust using it on the structure. And so that's how much mud set up on me. So I just uh, made those little stepping stones. So the first day doing the, the, the beam and that side and this side was one and a half bags. Then the second day I did a, a half bag. And then I came back a third day, did a half bag. And then on the fourth day, I tried to do a half bag. And these aren't full days. These are, you know, uh, a couple hours here and there as I, as I have it to work. I really had envisioned doing it all in one go, but you know how it is. So today, I'm going to mix less than a half a bag. 
so I don't have anything set up on me. And I'm going to try to finish up all these things I started. So since I'm going to be tying into places like this that have, uh, you know, mud sticking out, <laughs> I'm I'm going to go ahead and uh, screen my sand with a with an eighth inch screen and get all the rocks out of it, just so I can really work the cement into that. I'm going to try to finish as many of these details as I can. Because again, it's at the end of the day. I only got three hours before I pick up my kid. We'll see what I can do. Alright, so uh, this is my wash sand. This is a uh, an eighth inch screen. And I got a, a, a mortar box here. I'm going to go for the dry stuff on top. Alright, so I made one bucket of of screen sand and this should be enough to get me through the day I'm thinking because probably a quarter bag of fair cement work is all I have left to do uh, so let's let's make a little a little micro mix all right so I'm gonna use this uh, coffee can as uh, my part <laughs> all right so I need two parts sand there's one part I'll call that a part. I think. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Let's just see what happens in here. I have no idea how many fibers to throw in a little tiny mix like this. So I'm just going to gonna do a tiny little handful. Yeah, something like that. Just wish it good luck. Godspeed, fibers. So I'm doing the trowel loading technique here. So these inside curves are really hard to do with normal trowels so I, my neighbor suggested I use one of these like uh, Bondo shovels or whatever they're called and just sort of work this so just some closing thoughts on fiber reinforced ferro cement I, I like it I want to continue using these uh, crack preventing fibers uh, but saying that I do believe that they cause the cement to lose its workability quicker than the typical hour you get with this type 1-2 uh, Portland cement. So let me read a little something. Uh, Upon the addition of water, tricalcium silicate rapidly reacts to release calcium ions, hydroxide ions, and large amounts of heat. The pH quickly rises to over 12 because of the release of alkaline hydroxide. The initial hydrolysis slows down quickly after it starts, resulting in a decrease in heat evolved. The reaction slowly continues producing calcium hydroxide ions until the system becomes saturated. Once this occurs, the calcium hydroxide starts to crystallize. Simultaneously, calcium silicate hydrates begin to form. Ions precipitate out of the solution, accelerating the reaction of tricalcium silicate to calcium and hydroxide ions. The evolution of heat is then dramatically increased. The formation of the calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate hydrate crystals provide seeds upon which more calcium silicate hydrate can form. The calcium silicate hydrate crystals grow thicker, making it more difficult for water molecules to reach the unhydrated uh, tricalcium silicate. The speed of the reaction is now controlled by the rate at which water molecules diffuse through the calcium silicate hydrate coating. This coating thickens over time, causing the production of calcium silicate hydrate to become slower and slower. I can't pretend to really know what that means, but uh, that is a description from uh, some university <laughs> website as to how concrete hardens so uh, my theory is those little uh crystals that they form are bonding to the the fibers and causing 
the cement to feel more rigid before the crystallization process is complete, thus lowering the work time that you have with the mix. So if I if, if my dad and I were doing this together, I'm sure it would have been fine and we could have worked on it all day long. But uh, I think for a solo job or maybe all jobs including you know fiber reinforced ferro cement, we probably need to put a retarder in there, you know, a, a cement retarder to to prolong the setting time of the cement and increase my work time. Part two. Pony wall, a cupola, I don't know what we're calling it, but the little wall on top of the fair cement dome. So my dad's been plugging away on the cupola. We're going to do this little raised wood frame with windows around it and do a kind of an oval shaped round roof. He's just framing out the window openings right there. Okay, there's one panel. One panel down. 15 to go? It was 18, I think. Eight. Oh, goodness. 17 to go? I think that's looking pretty cool. So this is an old model that we built, uh, I guess my dad put this together, like, I don't know, 10 years ago maybe, <laughs> when, when we were getting uh, some work going. Anyways, we were just messing around trying to conceptualize this thing. We're pretending these blocks of wood are windows, right? And so we've decided to do three windows on the front and back, and then we'll do a... Uh, two windows on the side each side just to give us a place to go because we're framing up our pony walls for the, uh, the, you know, the cupola and um, we're gonna frame these you know, 16 inch centers and these are being framed with a 36 inch opening to receive the uh, the windows that we've we've looked into and then uh, another thing that we're daydreaming about is how we're gonna do uh, maybe uh, some bracing so we're talking about doing a scissor brace you know something something like that to, uh, to help strengthen the contraption <laughs> anyways this is scale model one foot's an inch you know we're gonna be going up like five and a half feet it's, uh, it's like 24 feet by what is it? 30 feet. <laughs> Our oval. Uh, anyways, let's get to work. So what we have to do is we have to attach this uh, square pony wall sections to the fair cement flange that we built. And leveling the sections on the wall, we have gaps <laughs> underneath the wall. So we're going to fill that with mortar. And the, the second strategy is we pre-cut all the boards uh, you know, for the bases and seals of these these framed walls, and made sure they were you know flush and butted up next to each other, real nice and square, very level. Just you know, hoping that if we can build square boxes, it'll come together and be the same size on the top as it is in the bottom. So, so that's our plan of attack. 17, seventeen and seven eighths. Mark seventeen and seven eighths. go perfection now to make that a easily repeatable cut I'm going to use this block and C clamp to butt up the end we'll hold this down board against blade block against board nice and square Tighten that up. Just double check. Alright. 
dies off by a teeny wee bit. And the rest of these. Alright, now I got my pieces cut. What I'm going to start with is uh, the end pieces. I'm just going to have one to help prop it up. What we're doing is we're getting this corner here flush and then the back side is going to stick out a little bit. We have a hand planer to knock that down. I got my The compressor is leaking pretty bad, so we're using the, the, the gas powered. Alright, so I have half of this nailed. I'm gonna just flip it over and do the other side. I see this lip here. That's just sort of inevitable when you have uh, the sort of angle that we're building. And so we played that off. I have a, a hand planer, electric hand planer. Then we, you know, get that knocked off just so the plywood sheathing on this will go on better. So we've been working on our uh, pony wall, cupola wall. I don't know, leveling. And so the, the, the previous concrete work we did was pretty close to, no, it wasn't pretty close. It was, it was, it was decent for finding level, I guess. But it turned out that, uh, that one side was two inches higher than the other. So through a combination of various heights of these walls and using, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, see those washers? Using washers as shims. And uh, we're, we're finding level on the uh, where's the top? On the top beam here. So we're doing our final assembly. We got the stacks of washers, which are our shims for level. And then uh, I'm taking off some of the surface rust and then Painting. Putting some primer on things. Get it for action shot. Wow. That looks like tight. Check my footing on the edge of the scaffold board. Okay. Oops, I left the drill right out of reach. Oh man. So the piece we cut off here gives you the complementary angle for the other side.
So my dad's working on restoring uh, these old scaffolds that got a little soft on us. Uh, just so we have better access for when we put the roof on the thing. So we got these, you know, hurricane straps or tornado straps. Or just regular straps, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> this is just a little extra insurance to make sure that the weight of the roof doesn't push the walls out. I also got my palm neller. Alright, so in an effort to get these tight, you know, I started on one side and then I'll sort of put the nail in at an angle to try to stretch the metal taut like a drum head. Anyways, I'm just sort of tacking them up there, a few nails on each side, and uh, I'll fill in, you know, however much I think is necessary. I just only have... I have so many nails and I got a lot of straps to do, so I don't want to run out. So I'm working around with the straps here. We also got our catwalk, you know, pretty solid. But another thing that we're doing is we are grouting underneath these, uh, uh, these beams because in order to build this level you know we had to get some some pretty serious gaps going <laughs> you know so so each one of these these uh, frames is is uh, a different height but the top is level and you know window openings are different sizes and I don't know if we're going to do different size windows or or uh, piece them in so we can have a standard window size all the way around. That's probably what we're going to do. Then we're concerned about the overhang. So we're adding another layer, maybe going to do two layers of two by fours over all the windows, uh, well, over the whole wall, just to get the roof up high enough that we can see some skylight from the, from the ground. You know, we want to be able to see, the, see through the windows, not just look at the bottom of the roof. So we're going to make that adjustment. Got my buddy Zach helping me today. We're grouting underneath the, the frames and putting the straps on still. We had one extra strap, that's pretty cool. Well, I don't know what I was thinking putting my deck sealer up here, but this has been out in the weather so long. Some of these flat boards are getting kind of terrible looking. Uh, anyways, I'm cutting out uh, the sheathing around the windows and using a jigsaw and just tacked them up here so use it as a pattern. Uh-oh. It'll be quick. Ho-ho-ho. Get this thing done. Cut spooked out by the lightning. It's a hell storm that we're having. Oh man. Guess I'm gonna have to take a break. Let this pass. <laughs> the reason why we have everything stacked against the walls is because the dome comes up and gives us you know, whatever that is, five feet of dry space. It wasn't real windy. So that's why we store all of our stuff in here. There's a pony wall. Hopefully, you know, there won't be any adverse effects from 
putting all this uh, deck sealant on there. Uh, I think it'll be a good choice when it's all said and done. Because we got, this is our rainy season, north central Texas. All right, well here's a good example of why we need a, a really good waterproof membrane. Could you imagine if your outlets leak every time it rains? Oh man. Well the hell's picking up a little bit. So we're getting close to putting a roof on this thing, but first we gotta frame up our roof. And uh, we were working on some models. So let's go to the office. Right in here, little office in the woods. All right, so my dad's been uh, building these, <laughs> these models. This one's uh, just getting started. We're looking for scissor trusses and different ways to build them. It's seriously, what we've done is we got on Pinterest and Google Image and uh, went to a friend's house and just looking at, at various types of uh, uh, scissor trusses built with uh, dimensional lumber. You know, because probably the prettiest ones are, are timber frame. But, anyways, if you can see this, this is our, our dome. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the side that I'm working on, the painting walls is out here. So we're going to build this oval roof. And so basically, we have a half a round roof with a rectangular extension and another half of a round roof. And so our first scissor beams are going to be this uh, rectangular part. Well, that's it for this video, folks. <laughs> uh, I really want you all to stay tuned, though, because we got a lot of exciting work left to do. And I really feel like the, uh, the roof is beautiful. I know you probably shouldn't say that about your own, you know, project, but I really, I really enjoy what we've done. So, uh, thank you so much for your attention. And, uh, I really appreciate all the views that, that these videos get. All right, catch you next time.